Hey guys, how's it going? In today's video, I wanted to do a little bit of explaining about 7.3 power stroke injectors. And I'm going to basically cover a little bit about how they work. They are a hydraulically actuated unit injector. I'll explain a little bit more about that later on in this video. And the main thing I want to get into is when you get to a lot of performance applications, you'll start looking at fuel injectors. And you'll start seeing crazy numbers of injector CCs. And you'll start seeing injector nozzle percentages. And I'm going to see if I can kind of clear up the murky waters there, help you guys understand what all that means. And also, hopefully in the end, we can go into a little bit about what injector you're going to want if you're, say, shooting for a high horsepower application. To get things started, I've gone ahead and I've drawn a very basic layout as to what the internals of a 7.3 injector are going to look like. Essentially all it is, is you have a, basically an intensifier piston, and this is what's in contact with the high pressure oil that comes from your H-pop, your high pressure oil pump. And then also has a sort of a plunger and barrel assembly. And this is really where the fuel is actually going to be just prior to it being injected into the cylinder. So the way this works is that typically this the injector starts in the upward position. You have high pressure oil that pushes down on all of this, but one thing that's interesting to note about the way that these work is that the piston that the oil pushes on is the intensifier piston, and it's generally a lot larger than the plunger and barrel assembly that we have down that actually pushes on the fuel. And what this actually does is it amplifies the force that the intensifier piston pushes down on the fuel about seven times. So what that ultimately means is that even though the oil in your high pressure oil rails will range from about 500 to 3000 PSI, well a seven to one ratio increase in pressure means that that fuel is also injected at a range between 3500 and 21,000 PSI. And basically, a little bit given reference, your typical car tire is only about 20, uh, 35 PSI or so. So we're talking about extremely high pressures, and that's what allows the engine to have good atomization and allows the fuel to burn and get more power. Now for a basic rundown about what the HEUI actually means, the Huey injector means, is it basically stands for Hydraulic Electronic Unit Injector. What that means is that basically what ends up happening is, I already explained before, that we get the hydraulic pressure from the engine oil that pushes down on our intensifier piston. Now it is electronically controlled and basically what happens is that there's a solenoid valve at the top of every single one of these injectors and that opens and closes and allows oil to enter into the area where the intensifier piston is to in turn allow for the fuel to be injected. And because it is electronically controlled this gives us an immense amount of control over the injection event itself and that's why you're able to tune your 7.3. Basically the way it works is that you Put your foot down on the skinny pedal, send a signal to your PCM, but the PCM itself doesn't supply enough current to fire off the injector solenoid valves, so it then gets amplified by the IDM, which is the injector driver module, where it in turn just opens our solenoid valve, lets the oil flow in, and in turn fires the fuel off to give us power and give us a response when we put our foot on the floor. All right, now on to injector CCs. So generally speaking, injectors are rated by their CCs. And what that is, that's a flow rate in cubic centimeters per minute. Well, a cubic centimeter is equivalent to a milliliter. And this applies to really any fuel injector out there, not just 7.3 injectors. But the idea behind this is that essentially, if you were to energize your injector and leave it on continuously for an entire minute, it would ultimately flow out, say, X amount of CCs of fuel. And you could measure that by, say, putting in the fuel in a cup or something like that. Now, to give you an example, OBS, Old Body Style 7.3s have the AA injectors, and they're rated at 90 cc's of flow rate. So if you were to leave one of those injectors on for a total of one minute, there should be 90 cubic centimeters, 90 milliliters of fuel that have gone through the injector by the end of that minute. All right, the next thing I want to talk about is the injector nozzle percent and exactly what that means. So in simple terms, the nozzle percent is on an injector is going to be the percent that it is larger than the stock injector. So really, an injector that might have, say, stock nozzles on it is going to have, say, a 0% nozzle. And basically what this does is it controls really how fast that fuel is released. And it, the equivalent to this is, think about if you're trying to drain a swimming pool. Would you want to drain it through a straw? You know, if you drain it through something small as a straw, it would take forever to get all of that that fuel or that water out, even though it has a large capacity. Or instead, you could have a large six inch pipe and it's gonna drain a heck of a lot faster otherwise. And that's the same idea behind nozzles. You can, with a larger nozzle, you can get that fuel to flow out of the injector a lot quicker than you could with, say, a smaller nozzle. Next up, I wanna give you guys a quick example about, say, stage one and stage two performance injectors. 
So I just looked online real quick and I found some stage ones that you can get for a 7.3 and they're rated at 180 cc's, but they don't say anything about the nozzle. So if no nozzle size is, is said, it's implied that they are 0% or stock nozzle. And to give an idea, compared to say an OBS AA injector that only flows 90 cc's, this stage one will flow twice the amount of fuel as an OBS will. But something that's kind of interesting though is if we jump to say a stage, stage two example of one, it's only rated 155 cc's, but it has a 100% nozzle, and yet it makes more power. But why is that? It has a lower cc's, but keep in mind it does have the larger nozzle. And these nozzles really come into play when we're talking about high engine RPM. There's a very limited amount of time that the fuel is able to be injected into the cylinder to make power. And whenever you can release a lot of that fuel quicker, you can burn it more efficiently, and you can also burn at the optimal time and get more power out of it as well. So that even though this stage two has a lower CC rating, because that nozzle allows it to flow that fuel so much quicker, it's able to take advantage of more of that CC as it can, whereas a stock nozzle might not necessarily be able to. Also, to give you guys an idea, I already established that the AA injectors from an OBS are already at 90 cc's, but typical Super Duty injectors do have more potential for power because they do are rated for about 140 cc's in their stock applications. The next thing I want to address here is the situation where and why you would need to get bigger injectors with a higher cc flow rate than you had previously. Now, the thing to keep in mind is that these 7.3 injectors can only fire generally once on a per injection event. They just are, they're too slow to refill themselves. And if you keep in mind uh, with the way these work, they start off with these plunger and barrel assemblies basically full of fuel. And you, when it, whenever they're fired off, that fuel gets forced in. But there's only a limited quantity of fuel that's inside of that plunger and barrel. And when that fuel is gone, it's gone and you can't refill it. Generally stock applications with stock tuning, that's not a problem. They actually do have some fuel left over. But once you start getting to more aggressive tuning, there's a certain point at which all of that fuel that's inside the plunger and barrel assembly is actually pushed out and it's pushed into the piston to make power and there's just none left and you cannot get any more fuel, cannot get any more horsepower past a certain point. And that's really where you start getting to bigger CC injectors where they'll have a larger capacity inside their plunger and barrel assembly to allow more fuel to be injected and in turn allow for more power to be made. Okay, now we've gone over a little bit as to where it is and when you would need to get larger CC injectors, but now I'm going to cover a little bit more about why you would need bigger nozzles. Here's an example I found online was a 200cc, 200% injector. So this is 200cc cubic centimeter flow rate and a 200% larger nozzle than stock. So that's three times larger than the original nozzle, which means it dumps out fuel three times quicker. I want to give you guys an idea that when you think about an engine operating, let's say it's operating at idle 600 RPM, may not sound like it's going very fast, but when you think about it, that engine is spinning over still quite a number of times per second. And whenever you start increasing that time, you start getting less and less time for each revolution to occur. So at idle, you have about you know, five hundredths of a second that it takes for you to go through your power stroke that's going from top dead center down to bottom dead center, 180 degree rotation. But then whenever you increase the RPM to say 3000 RPM, well, you, you're basically traveling it's moving five times quicker than it would have before. And that means then that you now only have one hundredths of a second for that power stroke to occur. And a lot of times injectors are measured, you can measure injector flow rates off of their, their pulse width, which is basically how long that injector is hung open. Now, if you have only 10 milliseconds for that power stroke to occur, certainly you're not going to be dumping in fuel for that entire period of time. Otherwise, you would dump an immense amount of fuel and you'd probably burn it terribly and efficiently. A lot of injectors you see, especially with stock tuning, and at least on my truck, for instance, flow, it, the injector pulse width generally ranges between 1 and 2 milliseconds, anywhere from idle to wide open throttle. But there's a certain point at which once you're getting to higher, higher RPMs, if you're, say, flowing 200% cc's of fuel and you're able to flow that, then that's a little more than twice the flow of a stock AA injector. And there's a certain point at which you can keep that injector only open so long because if you and you just cannot you don't have time to inject that fuel inside of the combustion vent because you don't want to inject it late and you certainly don't want to inject it in a time when it's not the power stroke. So instead of say dumping out all that fuel in two milliseconds, the injector pulse width equivalently of this this injector right here 
flow 200 cc's would have to be somewhere in the neighborhood of at least four milliseconds if not more and that's a really long amount of time for that injector to stay open so the solution for that is to put in a larger nozzle and that allows that injector to flow say three times quicker so instead of dumping out all this fuel in like five or six milliseconds it's able to do it in a little over one one and a half or something like that now you would think then by a certain point okay well why don't you just put the bigger nozzles on there let me get to that now that we've established a bit more as to the conditions why we would need to get a larger nozzle you might be wondering why don't we just put say like a 200 percent nozzle on a smaller injector like the 90 cc well, there's a couple reasons the biggest reason is going to be price it's expensive to use a bigger nozzle because you got to do some custom work to that if you can just use the stock nozzle then that's a lot less work that you have to do and it's one less part to have to add but the other main reason is that if you have a nozzle that's too big for the flow rate of your injector it's extremely hard to tune and what that means is timing whenever you're tuning you basically will control the volume of fuel that's injected or the injector pulse width and you also will control the timing that that fuel is injected see a lot of times the fuel isn't necessarily injected right at top dead center you can actually play around with that a little bit based on that you can get say more power output and you can also say have higher emissions or lower emissions equivalently but there's a certain point now, basically, you can have advanced timing, which is where you'll inject a little bit earlier on in the stroke. So you can inject it sometimes even before the piston reaches top dead center. But the downside is if you were to inject too much timing in advance, you can actually destroy the engine because you can actually have this thing combusting as the piston's trying to go up and compress everything, and that will just destroy your engine. It's extremely hard on things. And you also lose tons of power. Or another thing you can do is you can retard timing and you can move that a little bit later on, say after top dead center. And sometimes you'll want to do that for particular reasons. But these injectors flow based off of their pulse width, how long they're open. Typically, so stock injectors have a one to two second on stock tuning. They'll have a one to two millisecond time that they are open. And that's anywhere from, say, idle to wide open throttle. But if you have something that flows all that fuel out, say, three times quicker, then instead of having a range of an entire millisecond, you might only have, say, a quarter of a millisecond difference between, say, idle and full on a wide open throttle. And when you're talking about a difference that small, you have to keep in mind that there's tons of factors that go into tuning. You have uncertainties involved in it. Sometimes you might have a different electroconductivity. And when we're talking about milliseconds, every little bit makes a difference. Maybe the air temperature is different. Maybe you've got a higher moisture comp or content in the air. All these factors add up and cause variation. And if you have too advanced timing, you're going to risk blowing up the engine. And so if you have, say, a nozzle that's a bit larger or a bit smaller, it allows you to have a wider window, wider gap between idle and wide open throttle. Makes it easier to tune. The question that often comes up is, do you need tuning for your truck? Well, it depends on two things. Do you like more power? And do you like your truck running? Well, if you do, then the answer is maybe. If you were to say put stage one injectors with 180 cc flow rate, yes, it has capacity and it can potentially flow more fuel. But if it has those stock nozzles, it's gonna have the exact same flow characteristics as a stock injector. And so you're not gonna see any more power unless you were to increase the pulse width that that injector is open and in turn inject more fuel. The way you do that is with a chip. So if you were to say stick those stage one 180 cc injectors into a stock truck without any tunes, odds are you're not going to see any any differences whatsoever. Unless say your injectors are worn out, maybe you're going to see some power coming back just because your injectors are worn. But if you do get a larger nozzle, the answer is yes, you absolutely have to get a chip. Otherwise, you risk blowing up your truck engine. Because when you inject, when you put a larger nozzle on there, you can effectively inject that fuel sooner. And with stock tuning, that might ultimately end up having that fuel injected earlier and advancing the timing. Like I said before, too advanced timing can really destroy stuff. And so to take full advantage of it, and even to get the truck to run a lot properly, run anything close to like it should, with larger nozzles, you would definitely need to get a chip. Next question comes up is what size injectors do you want for your truck? Guys, a lot of that depends on what you want with your truck. You're looking to pull sleds, you, are you looking to drag race, or are you just looking for a nice snappy daily driver? Well, a lot of that boils down to how much you're willing to spend. If you wanted to, say, put this 400 to 400% and get over 1,000 more horsepower, odds are you're going, you, you will definitely need to run dual high-pressure oil pumps at least. You're also going to upgrade your transmission, need a bigger turbocharger, better intercooler. We're talking about tons of serious upgrades, and all that gets extremely expensive really quick. 
So ultimately, I'd say look at what other folks have done, look on on the internet, and find the best. I don't have any guaranteed answer for this, and I apologize about that because there are just so many factors that go into this. Well, guys, that pretty much does it for this video here today. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope they helped you understand a little bit more about 7.3 Power Stroke or just injectors in general. If you like the video, make sure you click that like button. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave that down in the comment box. If you like watching videos about old trucks as well, be sure to click that subscribe button. I try to post videos as they come on up and try to help other folks out along the way. In the meantime, thanks very much, and y'all have a good one.